coming out was to one, check and test the structure of the vessel at various speeds, check any vibration, uh, check for any weaknesses, uh, which we found none, by the way. In the wheelhouse, the ship's high-tech nerve center, operations are a matter of fingertip control. We're unlike on normal vessels, we're down in the engine room. Up there, everything is from the wheelhouse. And we have screens and it's point and click so that we select engines, we start and stop engines, machinery, equipment. Everything can be done from the station up there. We have redundancies in the systems that we can do it locally and manually if required, but every piece of equipment on the ship can be monitored and controlled from the wheelhouse station. We're cruising along here at uh, about 1200 RPM and we're doing about 35 knots. Uh, as you step into that higher range, um, the speeds of uh, 42 knots are very, very achievable. This is what we've been working for for two years. Uh, this is the second day of trials, and I tell you, yesterday went really well, and everybody left here last night with like, hearts pounding, and everybody was really enthusiastic. Captain Taylor's glowing report on the ship's performance is a testament to the effort and skill of all who built her. There, there hasn't been a sea trial like this on a large high-speed craft that's gone uh, to date this smoothly. Uh, she handles a dream. It's so satisfying, not just from the operator's point of view, but when you consider the number of hours that the people that built the ship put in, that's where the credit should go. I mean, you can teach a monkey how to drive this, but it's a major engineering feat. And to see it come together like this is uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And myself, I, we really feel blessed to be able to sail on a craft like this. I think the performance of the, of the ship is fantastic. It's smooth, it's quiet. Uh, I, you know, so far it's met all of the expectations that, that we had at the outset of the program. As the Pacific Cat passes muster with flying colors, BC Ferry's extensive crew training continues with programs designed under the leadership of Captain Taylor under Transport Canada's watchful eye. The high-speed code actually dictates operational requirements that the crew and the officers must be able to meet in order to operate this vessel. We are additional, uh, on top of that, place a great more emphasis on what we call bridge resource management, bridge management structures, communication structures, team structures, and the ability of the crew to handle the equipment and the emergency procedures. Following Transport Canada's close scrutiny, the Pacific Cat's crew is approved for a Canadian Coast Guard operating certificate. They've been deemed competent to handle the vessel safely in all circumstances and contingencies. The instruction is given um, in every area of the ship's operation. Not only are people instructed, but their proficiency is rated. Um, the officers have to have what's called a type rating certificate, which again is borrowed from the aircraft industry. Uh, the catering crew also have to be trained uh, to get a, a rating, and uh, they're trained in emergency procedures as well as operating the hotel services. So the whole crew has to, to work as a unit to prove to Transport Canada that we can safely uh, not only operate the ship, but handle any emergency. While CFI and representative members of BC Ferries crews have been completing sea trials and training the Pacific Cats crews, other teams of staff have been addressing all the other issues related to successfully bringing this new class of vessel into service. A lot of our marketing research has shown us that people want a faster crossing and more frequency in service, and that's exactly what the FastCat program is going to deliver. One way to manage increased demand is to introduce a reservation system, much like the airlines do it, and you're guaranteed a place on the sailing. The international rules governing high-speed craft do not allow deep friars in the Pacific Cat's galley. BC Ferries has responded to this and the shorter sailing times the catamarans offer with new approaches to their passenger services. We have a really tight group of professional people who run the onboard services and we have a wonderful opportunity with our vessel. It's uh, beautifully set out, as you can see, and what we want to do is take that a step further and bring in, we bought in the menu that uh, is developed 
just for the fast trip over. We have things that people can pick up easily. We want to sort of augment the interior here and buy, buy them in. We've got uniforms which speak to different type of service. Uh, we'll have really good training for the people. So the opportunity of the forge is we can show what we can really do. And the vessel will let us, let us do that. And I think that uh, people will be really happy with the result. and training are completed and the ship enters service, the real trials for this initiative on the part of the Ferry Corporation and BC Industry now begin. Robert Allen, a senior naval architect on the project, sees for BC's fast ferry industry a world market potential, but one that must be proactively pursued. Uh, the opportunities been created would be a sin uh, to just sort of sit back and say we've delivered these three vessels now where is the next order coming from you know we have to get off our collective duffs and go after it BC Ferries Corporation and CFI have primed the pump the rest will be up to a newly revived local industry I think we have a great opportunity we've given them a grounding we've given them uh, the skill set but now the private sector is going to have to do it uh, to really take off. And I think uh, the signs are good, but it'll be a few years yet before we know how successful we'll be. The introduction of the fast ferries into the fleet will free up existing larger vessels for redeployment on other runs, producing benefits that will be felt throughout the BC ferry system. As this province continues to grow, we're always going to have an increase in the traffic on BC ferries. People have forgotten the four and five hour waits that they used to have on the ferries. It you know, just didn't happen now because we've got a better match. But we need to keep our head of that. This program was funded by British Columbia Ferry Corporation, Detroit Diesel, MTU Friedrichshafen, Detroit Diesel Allison, British Columbia, and Catamaran Ferries International.